Hi guys, and welcome to the technique of the week. Uh, what we want to do this week is we're working on the four phases. Now I know I've explained this to you before, I just want to quickly run through it before we start working with Zach, who's going to be helping me today. I've broken it down into basically four phases. You've got your striking range, and you've got your long range kicking, and then medium range punching. Then you've got clinch work, that's phase two, and in that you've got strikes such as uppercuts, elbows, knees, stuff like that. We're not going to do all of those, we'll just do a couple of them. And then you've got to win the tie-up game so that you can go to phase three, which is the takedown. Today we're going to be doing hip throw. And then we've decided today to finish on the ground. We're not going for a choke. We're not going for a standard arm bar. We're going to do a cutting arm bar from a knee ride position. So Zach's going to come in and give me a hand. Um, if I start at long range, long range will be kicking range. So I might, uh, I might feed uh, medium range kicking and medium range hands together. In this case, I'm going to do a crescent kick first, distract him, and then come in with a low round from there. Okay, so the crescent kick's going to be my setup for the low round, which is my power shot. So from there, one, and then shh, two from there. So that'll be a nice kind of long range game to play. We can play a medium range game, hands and feet, which be a jab cross combination shh, shh, to a low round from there. Okay, so shh, shh, which we've done thousands of times. And you can do a couple of rounds on that. So you make sure you do them in rounds. So you're getting work, you know, you want to be sweating. You want to feel it, okay? Then we can go to just medium range with hands, where I'm going to be peeling off, peeling the guard and striking. Obviously, I want that to be in his face, but he's my training partner, I don't want to do that. And then I'm going to peel off and strike, peel off and strike, peel off and strike, which is, you know, one of the purposes of Hyun's how to just peel the guard out of the way, create an opening, whether I peel and strike with the opposite hand or peel and strike with the same hand. Either way, very effective. Now, once we get in a little bit closer and we're in hand fighting range, I'm going to be peeling and elbow, peeling, elbow, peeling, elbow, peeling, elbow. Okay, and then we'll take the gloves off. Oh no, we've got one more we can do. He puts a collar tie on me and I'm going to do some dirty boxing in here. This is not the best position for me, but I still need to know how to strike. I want to win back the collar tie but I also want to be able to strike from there if I can. That might help me win back collar tie position or improve my position whichever way. So from there, sh sh now what I see happening a lot is guys doing this. They're concentrating so hard on what's happening here, they're leaving themselves exposed. Don't forget to build a frame here and make sure your chin is covered at all times. So sh 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 you don't have a lot of leverage. You don't have the same sort of rotation in your hips as you normally would, but you still have to be doing it, okay? Otherwise, it's just, just a basic arm punch. You need to be driving as much as you can. All right, so we take the gloves off, and we go into pure hand fighting or clinch work. Now, there's more than one way to do uh, neck uh, pummeling or collar tie work. He's going to try and win it back because inside tie is a little better than outside tie. I get to do a bunch more things than he does. So we're changing shape slightly and swimming back through and he's winning it back. And remember, your collar tie is on the occipital bone. So I've got the maximum amount of coverage. I'd like my elbows to be smashed up against his collarbone. But before that happens, there's a chance to win it back. And we'll talk about when it gets tighter what other things we can do, over-unders, under-overs, uh, elbow cranks. We're not worried about that today, we're just doing basic swim through. So from here, so it's neck pummeling. And you know, do a couple of rounds of that, get really good at it. And don't try and rip each other's heads off at first, get good at it first, smooth, and then start to ramp it up. And then we go through from phase two, deep in phase two, into phase three, which is what takedown am I going to do if I decide to do a takedown? And for me, the obvious takedown, for me, you might have a different opinion, but for me, it is, you know, if he's got outside tie, to break that down, get a tricep tie, overhook, eclipse the hip, and then get a nice hip throw from there. Okay, so we'll just break that down one more time. So I've got inside tie, lucky me. Okay, I break it down from there. I overhook, I hip throw, and I've got this. Do I go to a full-fledged knee ride? Do I go to an arm bar on this side? Uh, do I want to go down into choke? Do I want to go to side control? It depends. 
Like today, what we're doing is this. I knee ride, I'm already kind of on the elbow. I just swim that through. I swim it through behind his tricep, clamp it down on his shoulder, figure four position, and I crank back, and it's, it's nasty, cutting arm bar from there. Okay, thanks, Zach. So that's basically the theme of our week. It is the four phases. You can, in some weeks, just concentrate on phase one. Sometimes I say, we're not going past phase three. We're just gonna be doing takedowns all week. We're gonna be doing transitions from phase two to phase three. We're gonna be doing phase four. We're just gonna start on the ground, work our way back up. So the four phases can flow in amongst it themselves. Okay, so thanks guys, thanks Zach. Okay, thank you. And look out for next week's technique. Thanks a lot.